Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the WordPress Community Interview Series. Uh, my name is John Parkinson, and with us today is uh, Josepha Hayden. Uh, Josepha, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to uh, be the interview uh, this week. I do appreciate it, and I know this was on short notice. Uh, so, uh, again, I do appreciate your time and willingness to uh, come on and chat a little bit. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, so my name is Josepha Hayden, uh, and I work primarily with WordCamps and WordPress-related events across the world, and I work all the time for Automatic, but they donate my time to kind of that WordPress.org community side of things. Oh, great, great. great. And uh, so you attend a fair amount of uh, WordCamps. How many roughly per year? Gosh, roughly per year. So we as a team try to go to about two a month, uh, but they're not always me, fortunately, because everybody would be sick of seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I go to um, probably a, a little more than five a year. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> not bad. Uh, and then um, you talk about, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, WordPress community and uh, what teams are you on right now? Uh, from the make.wordpress.org uh, community. Yeah, so I am specifically, most of my time is on the community team. So like I said, WordCamps, meetups, uh, anyone who's doing some sort of WordPress-specific event that needs a little bit of help in the planning, we also will help with those. Uh, but then I also spend a lot of time with the training team. building. Yeah, we build a bunch of curriculum for anyone to use. Uh, but specifically, we've been building a couple of major workshops for a group called Hack the Hood and a group called oh. Connecting for Good, who specifically teach um, people who are part of underrepresented demographics in technology more about technology. Oh, great. Oh, great. Uh, so the training team, I know, has a couple members, uh, uh, Melinda Helt mm -hmm. and yes. Beth uh, Soderberg. Is that the... Uh -huh. Okay. And I know that... Uh, uh, Melinda is involved in the planning of the first word camp in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, which is coming up in three weekends. Yeah, uh, so. I think a contributor day as well, so that's exciting. Oh, really? I didn't know about that. Oh, great, great. And uh, there's so many different uh, communities in WordPress that people can uh, contribute to. You don't necessarily have to be a uh, developer or designer. Could you tell us a little bit about some of those? Yeah, for sure. This is one of my favorite things to talk about, for one. And for two, I'm about to do this talk at um, WordCamp Omaha, and so it's fresh in my mind. I was just looking at my outline today. Uh, yeah, there are the, those um, teams that everybody kind of knows about as far as giving back to WordPress and WordPress core, like building plugins and building themes and reviewing them and putting um, core con contributions out there and fixing bugs and, and feature requests, all that stuff. Uh, everybody thinks about that first when you say, oh, how do you contribute to WordPress? Uh, but as you mentioned, there are a lot of ways that you can give back that don't require much code knowledge at all, a little bit, because we are using WordPress. It is a technology. Uh, but for sure, WordPress, um, any sort of WordPress event that's going on, which would include WordCamps, obviously, meetups, obviously. But then also, if you're wanting to do a hackathon that is specific to WordPress, there's one that's out there called Do Action. Um, that's definitely a way that you can give back to WordPress as a whole by just kind of doing that outreach and education thing that we find so important. Um, but also, there's the support forums, which are almost entirely volunteer driven. That's a great place to give back if you, again, don't necessarily know code, but you are really familiar with WordPress. Um, documentation, really important. Got to document the project as you go. Uh, the training team is a big one. And we also have a team that I don't think is currently reflected on um, uh, on the make site, uh, but we freshly have a brand new marketing team. So I know that there are a lot of people interested in that as well, and that's a way that people can give back to. Oh, cool, cool. Can't wait to hear uh, more about that team. Yeah. Great, great. And I know that there's the uh, uh, A11Y accessibility. Yes, um, sure. And they, uh, I'm, yeah, and sure, I'm sure that any of the teams uh, can use help. Uh, yeah. And they just simply have to go to uh, make.wordpress.org and look through all of the uh, uh, the teams and you know just drop them a note. Uh, yeah. They're easy to find. 
Yeah, the, there's a page specifically that tells you a little bit about each team so that you can kind of know what you're getting into before you get there. Uh, it's called Get Involved. So it's make.wordpress.org slash get involved. Uh, and it has a list of all of the teams that we have and a little bit of a description. And then it takes you to the page, the P2, that's specific yes. to each of those teams. Yes. And it helps to have a uh, uh, WordPress.org username. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, you were able to attend uh, WordCamp Europe. Yeah. Uh, and that was in June, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was rather warm there, I understand. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> in an oven that was a, the size of a city. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> how, how, how did you uh, uh, get along there? Did you give a presentation? I did not. So I was there um, just, uh, not even just, I was there as a steward of the community uh, to make sure that we are paying as much attention to the European community and honestly the community outside the U.S. as we do the community inside the U.S. Uh, because this is where we were born, it's really easy for us to just be like, well, this is where we do the thing yes. <laughs> in the U.S. Um, but we have had amazing growth in some of um, some of the communities that we've been seeing in Europe in the last year. And so we wanted to make sure that we had people there to kind of foster that and um, and, and give them an opportunity to like ask us those questions. You know, it's a lot easier sometimes to talk to people face to face instead of with text. And absolutely, so absolutely. And that's actually something that I wanted uh, to ask you about the global uh, WordPress community. Uh, yeah. I have tried very hard to uh, get interviews with people uh, that are non US based, and other than working out schedules and uh, time zones. Yeah. Uh, it, it has worked out uh, just fantastic. Uh, I really haven't had anybody turn me down. Uh, everybody has been very receptive. Uh, it's I, I learned something new from everybody that I talk to. Uh, yeah. So it's a win-win for me. Uh, can you tell us about some of the uh, efforts uh, that might be going on within WordPress uh, to just make it seem like more welcoming, like you had mentioned before? Uh, to make sure that uh, everybody feels welcome in the uh, community. Yeah, sure. Uh, so there are a couple of things that are happening. For one, just kind of in the community as a whole, but then also with the with the people who, um, the deputies, the people who work a lot with the events that we're doing. Uh, so there's, for one, the, the Polyglots team, which I think you said you'd spoken to Petya, and so yes. I'm sure that there's been a lot of conversation about that. Uh, but that's definitely one way that we're trying to make sure that we internationalize WordPress itself as the tool. Uh, but uh, a couple of things that I know that are happening as far as the community goes and as far as the work that we're doing, the first thing that we are working on, and it's so very important, is making sure that our handbook is fairly internationalized. Uh, there will always be some jargon because that's the, the nature of technology projects. Uh, but for the most part, we're trying to make sure that um, we're being really culturally aware um, and using language that is easy to translate, but then also is not... Um, necessarily so uh, colloquial to any one place right. that turns into just kind of this, I don't know what that means. <laughs> we'll always keep howdy. That's not going anywhere. But, you know, things like that. We recently um, made some changes, at least for the community side. Uh, instead of saying Wrangler inside all of our forms, we changed it to be organizer because uh, Wrangler in a lot of places translates to cowboy. And right. so it's lead cowboy, which is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, and let me ask you a, a quick question. You had given a presentation, uh, I think it was WordCamp US, and it was titled uh, Communities and the General Art of Verbal Self-Defense. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Like what went into it or why I feel Just, like it's so important? Uh, well, maybe what, uh, why you feel it's important. Uh, yeah. Um, so... The Gentle Art of Verbal Self-Defense is a book series that was actually written by my grandmother. So there's part there's that that goes along with it. Uh, I have been reading and using it to kind of figure out how to navigate social situations since I was in college. Uh, my, my mom introduced me to that, and it has served me very well throughout my life. I have found that 
especially when we have a lot of this global communication and as WordPress gets bigger and bigger as a project um, and our communication remains on t with text, it's really important to know that not 100% of people that you talk to will absolutely know what you're trying to say when you first get started. Right. Uh, there's always like that negotiation of meaning at the beginning that has to happen, but because we're all kind of like this gigantic project, we kind of feel like we already know the meaning we're negotiating. Um, and so it is, to an extent, there are um, uh, conversational modes that the book goes more into. But what I was um, providing people was like five quick things that you can do uh, before you respond angrily to somebody. It's just kind of like a mental checklist. Is this person trying to harm me? Is it possible that they're telling the truth? If they are telling the truth, what is it true about all of those things? And I think it's extremely important generally uh, to be able to have that kind of um, really well thought communication. But especially in a global project where we have just a massive collection of a variety of minorities, you have to be so careful about how you communicate and when it comes time to have to have one of those conversations that are like, hey, I said a really bad thing and I didn't mean it. I didn't know any better. You know how to proceed through that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know when you're chatting with somebody online and you're just basically typing, it, yeah. it, it's so easy uh, to be taken out of context, yes. uh, and, and I think that we see that time and time again, uh, sure. you know, with all the social media. Yeah. Uh, I, I really don't think that I have any other questions other than one. Uh, do you have anything to add at this time? I do. So, um, so we like two years ago, moved away from IRC into Slack. And so people who are part of the WordPress community and want to find a way to get back, but they're not sure yet, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Just kind of the information gathering part. One, you can get into Slack. It's chat.wordpress.org to request an invitation to get into that Slack instance and kind of hang around in the chat room, see what everybody's talking about and see if there's some way that you, some team that you can fit in and some way that you can, that your skills can fit in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but also a lot of WordCamps have either contributor days or get involved tables where there's somebody who can tell you kind of what it's like to be doing this work. It's, um, it's not super taxing in most cases, but it takes a lot of people to do it. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I don't know, I find it really fun. I would find it really fun. I've been doing it since like 2011. <laughs> so like, I just love doing it. Um, but for sure, if, you're, if you've been wondering how to get started, Pop by any of those sites that we gave you. Pop by any of the chat rooms that we're in. Find somebody at a Get Involved table at a WordCamp. You'll be totally fine. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'll, <laughs> I'll make sure that I put the links uh, for these uh, at the end of the interview. Huh. Uh, the only thing I had that I, I wanted to ask was, uh, and, and this actually came with my uh, interview with Petya. Uh, okay. She is a big fan of uh, uh, carrot cake. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What, what is some of your favorite food as you're traveling around to different word camps? This is such a fantastic question. I have <laughs> an answer. So I make a point of every place that I go for a word camp or just generally traveling for work to find ramen. Like I'm on a global ramen hunt. I want to find the best ramen in the world. And so every word camp I've ever been to, I went and found some place to get ramen. And sometimes that's really hard to do, but I've done it. And it's fantastic. Oh, fantastic! That's great. I, I'm actually I'm glad I asked that. I was going to cut it out, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I asked. Uh, I have a very exuberant response about soup. Yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> totally unexpected, but uh, it works in well. Yeah. Well, if you don't have anything else, I'm uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this uh, again. I do appreciate uh, your your time and the fact that it was a very short notice. I do appreciate that very much, also. So uh, uh, hopefully we'll run into each other again someplace on the uh, uh, WordCamp circuit and uh, uh, have a good evening and a weekend. Thank you. I was delighted to talk to you all. Thank you.